Good morning everyone. We are back working on our 07 STI and we should be able to get this thing pretty close to being able to run in this video. Mochi, where are you? I don't want to I don't want to hit you with the car. So yesterday I came over to the shop and I didn't shoot a video. I was just trying to get caught up on stuff. Uh, but I came over, I got the feed side of the fuel system done on this thing. I did the upper coolant tank expansion delete and I uh, just cleaned up a couple more things in the engine bay. So in this video, I'm gonna try to knock out all the other little stuff that we have, the boost controller, the intake, the air box, the hot side intercooler piping, the battery, all that little stuff, just so that way this thing is pretty much ready to start. Once I can get the battery in, get a charge on it, we can actually install our access port onto the ECU, get the serial number, so that way we can start getting a base map made for this car, so that way, as soon as the last couple little things that I ordered show up, we should be good to start it. So, I say we start today off with our battery. Let me show you what we're working with. We'll get it installed and kind of go from there. For our battery here, we are actually using the old full throttle battery out of the 17 STI. When Melee sent us the big old massive one of these, it's like two of these combined uh, for the EG33, I have this extra battery tray laying around and it's got my old logo like etched onto it and whatnot. So the first thing we need to do is go ahead and get our tray actually installed. So we're just gonna drill this into the stock battery tray. We'll drill a couple holes, we'll put a couple rib nuts in so that way we can just bolt this down. Once this is bolted down, we can bolt the box to this guy, get our battery put in the box, and then I also have brand new battery terminals. Brand new battery terminals right there. So that way we can get rid of whatever the hell is going on with this AutoZone special one. So I say we start today off, let's get our battery installed. Once we get our battery installed, we can actually get our access port married to the CCU. It looks like it can really only go in like that. I've got our battery on a tender right now. It is all mounted up. So once this thing gets a decent charge on it, we'll actually marry our access port to this ECU. So that way we can get serial numbers, things like that, to be able to get a base tune made for this thing. So next up, we're gonna jump to boost controller. I was gonna use this Company 23 anti-surge one that I have mounted up here, but I was looking at the diagrams. It looks like it's all for external wastegate. I'm assuming it would work the same for internal gate. I messaged Company 23, so for now, I guess I'll just leave it there. I don't, it should work the same. Boost controller is a boost controller. I don't see why it wouldn't work for internal wastegate. I'll just hook it up the same for internal wastegate as you would for external wastegate. We'll just get the vacuum lines ran for that boost controller. If it comes out and it finds out that I can't use this one, then we will jump over to, I have a Grim Speed one over there. So if the Company 23 one won't work for any reason, we'll use our Grim Speed one. Yeah, I found it on the website. It says in their product description that it can be used to eliminate annoying flutter internal wastegate and external wastegate. So uh, we're just gonna rock for this. So it's got a ground wire here. We can just ground this down to the chassis right there. This will plug into our boost controller, but first we'll get the lines ran. So looking at the diagram, it looks like back port here is gonna go to the turbo boost source. This middle one is gonna go to the wastegate, which is right here. And then the far one is gonna go to the inlet hose, which is our turbo inlet over there. So let me just start running some boost lines and we can get this thing hooked up. Thing's sick, I like that. So we have our boost controller all mounted up there. Uh, for the wire, not the wiring, for the vacuum lines, for the forwardmost port here, that's gonna go up to your boost source. So off the turbo right there. Rear left one is going to go to the wastegate there. The rear right one right there is gonna go to the vacuum source, which is, or the, uh, the air, in, uh, the inlet, the turbo inlet. Normally it's like waste or dump and you would just dump it to the atmosphere, but you can put it in the inlet. So we have ours going to the inlet right there. So we got our boost controller plugged in. I have it grounded to the chassis there and then it's plugged in down there. We're gonna have to clean up all that wiring. But um, what I need to do next is kind of finish up this area. So we're gonna go ahead and get the intake air box in here, the intake and that kind of stuff. And that'll kind of wrap up this side. 
This side's pretty much wrapped up also. Then it's just right in the middle that we need to do. For the air intake on this car, we are using the Cobb SF intake system, I guess you could call it. I like this air box on these cars with the Cobb front mount because you can still use the air box and run a front mount. And it's just, you've got to modify the box a little bit, obviously, but for the most part, it works better. You can keep the box and it looks great. So I like the Cobb ones, in my opinion, and they sound good. So we have the air box, comes with some hoses, some trim, some brackets, hardware, the lid, the post math hose, the intake filter, and the intake itself. And then I also bought a brand new math sensor. This car didn't come with a math sensor when I bought it. So obviously I needed one. I had some spares, but they were sitting in like some of these old parts bins, like this one for like an 08 plus. And they just kind of get banged around after sitting in there for a while. So, I mean, those are like emergency. I need a sensor. It'll probably work for a little while type of deal so it should get the job done so we're gonna hop in here the first thing we're gonna do is go ahead and trim our box up for our intercooler piping to be able to fit through once we get the box trimmed up we can get the box installed permanently to get the box trimmed what we need to do is come over here on this corner here and you need to cut out like a big I don't want to say the word but it's like a it's like a clamshell style so it's just gonna kind of go out and then come down right here, just enough for the pipes to be able to pass through. So let's get our box cut up. We'll get our trim installed on that. You see the shape I'm talking about, man. I just didn't want to say it, all right? I didn't want to say it. I know I'm the meanest. Get that or what has got its trim. Remember properly, this shares a bolt hole with that power steering pump bracket. So I gotta get that guy out. Does anyone else have the same problem with Milwaukee battery chargers where they just break for absolutely no reason? Like you just put a battery on there and then it flashes red and green and then it just never works again or is that just me? All of these wires need to stay out of the box, box with the exception of just this map one. It's the only one that should pass through. I went ahead and tossed in our brand new MAF sensor into our intake here, so we go ahead and kind of finoodle this in, which is kind of always a pain in the ass, which I might take the filter off and do this all I'm going to. I'm gonna take the filter off. So apparently I have some hose clamps sitting around in a box that'll work, so you know, yay us. We have the intake pretty much all figured out now. So I did buy a brand new snorkel for this thing. With the lid of the box, a lot of them come with a little bracket that you guys saw me have to bolt on there. Loosely bolt that on, get the lid on, and then stick your hand up in there to be able to tighten that bracket down to be able to get the lid to sit exactly where it needs to. I've seen too many people try to do that and they strip out the threads on these and then they're missing one or two screws on the lid of their box and it just kind of looks whack. So, dude, this engine bay looks real good, like really good. So I did go through, I made a list of all the stuff that I'm missing so that way I can order it tonight. I need like an alternator repair kit. I need a math harness repair kit. Uh, I have a turbo blanket on the way, the bypass valve adapter, all that kind of stuff to be able to get this thing started. It's so freaking close. If I just wasn't missing this random little stuff, we could start this thing today, but 
Once again, it's the little random stuff. Like I'm waiting on like hose clamps, radiator cap, all that weird stuff to come in. But for the most part, we're pretty much like fully done at this point. I have our power steering pump bracket coming in on Thursday so we can get our new pump in. I have the alternator here. So at this point, we're just waiting on the UPS stuff. So that looks really good. Super happy with that. I'd like to get some oil in that, but I don't think I have any here for this car. This car will use 530 or 1040. Either option will work totally fine on this thing. But what I wanna do is since we have somewhat of a charge, actually we have a full charge on our battery here, we need to do a couple of things since we now have electronics. I did go ahead and buy a new key fob for this car because like you guys saw, I ripped out that old security system in this thing and it just, it just the key fob and all that stuff, it was all gone. So I had to buy new stuff. But before we do that, I am gonna go ahead and marry our access port. So if you don't know how to marry access port, super easy. You just go on the access port, you hit install. It'll walk you through the prompt. There should be green test connectors on this car, which sucks. I'll put those on a switch later. I'm not too worried about it right now. So right for right now, I'll just crawl under the dash, plug them in, unplug them. Once we get uh, the access port all married up too, we can go ahead and marry our key fob. Let's not do that. Let's all chill out here. Fucking test connectors, man. Please wait while the access port initializes communication with your vehicle. It's saving the factory ECU data. Ah! Oh, outside 10, now it's working, dope. I guess I just had to sit here for a minute. It says dash, 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 F, so I'm guessing our uh, temp sensor is fucked up. So I guess I'm gonna add that to the list. They did overspray the hell out of it, so it wouldn't surprise me if it's all messed up. Dude, it's so cool seeing this thing come back to life, man. Oh, you guys, oh, I, um, you guys aren't excited as I am, I get it, but it's like, I love seeing these cars just come back from being absolute piles of <laughs> to like nice cars. I need new seats. I want new seats for this too, because this driver's seat blown out. We also have a short shifter transmission mount. Shifter bushings and uh, the Torque Solution solid U-joint to put in this car too, so I'm not looking forward to that, but. I'm so excited to have a fucking GD back, man. Mochi, I am so sorry that I'm blinding you with my headlights. I don't know why they're on. Oh my God, dude. Are you guys excited as, as excited as I, my brake lights are on also. Why are my, why are all of my lights like on? My headlights are on, my brake lights are on. But do the gauge clutch look so much better after swapping it out. So we have our access per married. So I made a small list of everything I need to order to get this car running. So I'm kind of limited to what I can do in the engine bay now, which is weird. So instead what we're gonna do is kind of jump up to the suspension. I do want to figure out where we're gonna have the front suspension sitting. I need to hook up the tie rod still to the knuckles. So that way the steering wheel actually turns the wheels. Uh, and then we're gonna lower this thing down a little bit in the front just to get our ride height kind of where we want it with the flares. Cause I. I I want this thing looking mint. We still need to cut and weld in the rear flares and everything like that, but I'm not gonna do that with the dogs here. Um, they don't like the frequency of the welder and they don't like the loud noises from the grinders and everything like that. So I'll do that when I don't have them with me. But for now, we'll jump up, lower the front suspension a bit, and kind of get it to where we want. We'll start by bringing each one down an inch and kind of seeing how we like it. Oh, no! Kit for the 1.993. That fixes the monster and a decent a bit, but I think I want it lower. This is really like over here, I can see that it's still like. That is odd. Fuck it, a little lower. Feel better now, you guys. Are, oh, oh, hi. Oh, hi. Hi, honey. Yes. Oh, we're laying down together now. Okay. That's an extension cord. That is. That is an extension cord. 
Okay, that's your bed, I guess. Suspension is lowered down a little bit more. I think that's a more usable height. I, I can't really go any lower than that on the coilovers. Otherwise, the shock will go straight into the axle. So, I mean, it's a usable height. It looks good, so I'm not too worried about it at all. Front lip's close enough to the ground where I can still drive the car and not have to worry about speed bumps too much. So, I do want to throw the rear flares on just so that way they're up and off the rack over here. Carlton did send us a new set. I've already tossed the old one. So, we do have a new set from Carlton. I kind of test fit them and they fit well way better, but I at least want to get the holes drilled, get them clecoed up, and then probably in the next video, we'll get the arches cut, welded, seam sealed, painted. I'll grab the other two Reg Masters and we can get those on the rear so that way this thing actually has its flares on here. Okay, so. Clears beautifully. One more that goes in the bumper down here. We can go ahead and knock that one out. Look at that. Rear flares from Carlton, the replacements fit way better. Check this out, I can actually open the door and close the door and not have any problems. So way better on this batch of flares than the prior ones that we had. Obviously it looks dumb right now with no wide wheels on there and the car's not lowered in the rear, but in due time, in due time, young ones. This side also, same thing. I can open the door, close the door, doesn't hit the flare. Look at that, way better now. I will say I do have one hole right here that I drilled from the last set that I'll tack weld up and then I'll just have the paint shop just to kind of touch that area up when we get the flares and the front bumper and whatnot painted. I did go ahead and toss in our OEM STI shift knob because the OEM one, in my opinion, looks the best. But that's all I got on the STI right now. I have everything else ordered at this point. Some of it shows up tomorrow, like the vacuum block system, the heat shrink, and a whole bunch of other stuff that I need uh, in order to just kind of finish up the engine bay. Actually, everything that I need to finish the engine bay has been ordered. Just waiting for it to ship. So what we're gonna do now real quick is go ahead and get the SCI up in the air, get the RX-7 pulled in, and then we're gonna take the Reg Masters off the RX-7 and play tire swip swap one more time so that way the RX-7 has a matching set of wheels and the STI has its matching set of wheels. Mochi! Bobby Light, he, he has the flashlight and he's just singing Bobby Light's gonna do you right, trying to have a flashlight in your eyes the whole time. No. Bobby Light's gonna do you right. He's got like a white wig on and he's in like a white suit and he's got big black and I think his stripper name was Black Mamba or something. And he's like in a thong, oh. whipping his, oh. We got some, we got some YouTube to do later. Bobby Light's gonna do you right. Not even an ooh tonight. So some of you guys may notice that the RX-7 is missing some wrap. I peeled some of that off last night. Uh, I kind of just made the decision to repaint the RX-7. It's not gonna be painted a crazy color or anything. It's gonna be repainted the exact same silver, uh, just so that way the door jams match, the engine bay matches, all that fun stuff. It's just, the paint on it's so old, like I've said so many times, that it's causing the wrap to fail, and it just, it doesn't look good, and I'm just not happy with it. So, <sighs> we'll take it to get repainted. I. I want to estimate it's probably going to be around like $2,500, $3,000 for a respray on this. We'll do all the prep work ourselves, but it also gives me an opportunity to go through and weld up things like uh, all the old holes on the body panels for things that we're not using anymore before it gets painted. So that way it all matches again. So that'll be kind of neat. So with that, that's all I got for you guys on this one on the STI. Next up will be probably fitting up the rear flares permanently, cutting, welding, painting, seam sealing, all that stuff on the rears. So that way we can get those on there. I will be taking the Reg Masters over to the tire shop in the morning to get all the wheels mismatched, swapped back around. So that way all the cars have matching wheels again. So like I said, that's all I got for you guys on this one. If you like the video, you know what to do. 
Go ahead and hit that like button, turn it black, blue, green, yellow, purple, silver, sci, and whatever color it turns for you. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel and you want to be, I'll put it in one of these corners. No idea which one quite yet. But with that, I'll catch you guys in the next one. So peace out, homies.